Hello, and welcome back to our Time Sticking YouTube channel. My name is Jake, as always, and today we're going to be discussing a very unique and relatively new luxury watch brand. So, stick with us through our intro, and we're going to be talking about who or what is Frank Muller. Now our posts here on YouTube have covered a pretty wide variety of subjects, everything from Grecian sundials to Bitcoin watches or ancient obelisks all the way to modern cinema. Undoubtedly, timekeeping is an ancient human tradition that goes back as far as recorded history. Every piece that's released, big or small, digitally capable or not, is part of the collective works of human civilization. With so many ancient influences and established names in watchmaking, it can be easy to overlook newer watchmakers and their influence on watch engineering. Herein rests our subject, Frank Muller. Muller is a relatively young and new watchmaker in terms of the timepiece scene. He's a baby boomer aged man, born in 1958, who went through the rigors of a Swiss watchmaking education. Learning from some of the best minds in Europe, his abilities as a watchmaker have been honed into his own unique crafts. His work is so fine tuned, it frequently wears the prestigious Geneve mark of excellence. So today we're going to take a moment to highlight both Muller the man and his self-titled brand of watchmaking. The history of Frank Muller starts all the way back in 1958 when he was born. Muller's father is a Swiss born man and his mother is Italian. He spent his earliest years in Le Chaux de Fonds, Switzerland, but would move out of his hometown at age 15 to pursue watchmaking. Studying at École de Horlogerie de Genève, aka the Geneva School, into his 20s, Muller eventually graduated and went right to work in the field of watchmaking. Some of his most notable ventures in this regard were rebuilding Swiss watches and eventually being an official handler of Patek Philippe watches. With the skills he'd acquired from his schooling in Geneva and his real-world work with watch complications, he began designing his own tourbillon movements. It was in the 1980s that he assembled a tourbillon movement comparable to Vacheron Constantin, Patek Philippe, and other Swiss maisons. At a time when the Swiss were hurting from the Quartz Revolution, Muller's career was pushing forward. After making personal strides in building his own original movements, Muller teamed up with Armenian-born case designer Barton Sermakis in 1991 to form Frank Muller Watchland SA. Under this company name, the official Frank Muller brand was born. Sermakis, like Muller, had previously worked with big Swiss maisons. However, his trade entails designing watch cases specifically. So Sermakis' work had included case design and diamond setting for Cartier, before Richemont took them over, and Daniel Roth. Both Muller and Sermakis coming together under the Frank Muller brand has brought fresh concepts into the world of luxury watchmaking. This combination of Muller and Sermakis' expertise really ended up blossoming a unique watch brand. After coming together in 1991, Muller and Sermakis pushed to release a unique wristwatch every year. So far their efforts have been incredibly successful. A particular hallmark of the Frank Muller brand, all uniqueness accounted for, is the curved case design on their timepieces. In 2008, Sermakis' efforts in case design were given a prestigious award by the Geneva Chamber of Commerce. Concerning his designs, a particular favorite we've covered is the Vanguard series design. Sporting a curved case and crystal, they're a sporty set of watches, which recently employed a standout piece in 2019. Indeed, the Frank Muller brand's most recent Vanguard release, as of this video, can be loaded with virtual Bitcoin currency. It also entails one of their best in-house movements to date. In just under the 20 year mark, Frank Muller did something pretty exceptional in 2010. Being a bit of a historical wave, Frank Muller released their record-breaking Eternitas Mega 4 in 2010. After 10 years, it still holds the record for most complications in a wristwatch, coming in at 36 complications. Although AM4, aka Eternitas Mega 4, boasts 36 complications, it has 23 indications. Any kind of complication or function beyond just telling the time is a micro-engineering feat. For Frank Muller to set this new bar, it took an incredibly masterful mind and hand. Though the Eternitas Mega 4 is an exceptional release by itself for historical reasons, every yearly release from Frank Muller is unique and worth buzzing about. As we move through 2020, it'll be wonderful to see what kind of complications and case designs will come from both the man and the brand. Sure as the sun rises in the east, 
we'll be on top of any new releases from these guys. Keep your eyes peeled for specific models from Frank Muller and other brands, as we here at Time Sticking continue to pick apart future timepieces. We'll do our best to keep you apprised and fill you in on existing knowledge in horology. What's more, the history of watchmaking is always injected into the spirit of our posts. Whether it's the most complicated wristwatch in the world or the first sundial, we'll do our best to cover all the subjects. So what are your thoughts on Frank Muller, both the man and the brand? Is there anything that we missed here in our post today? Let us know in the comment section below. We always love to hear feedback about our subject. Wow, thanks again for watching our YouTube video today. If you've really enjoyed it, we actually have a couple more videos available just right here and right there. On top of that, our entire channel is at your disposal, and if you subscribe by clicking the link that's right next to me, we'll give you the latest update on our most recent videos. So, thanks again for watching, and we hope to see you again.